Okay, as promised, this is the Book of Truth, Series 2, Hyperdimensional Warfare. This is the deepest that you're going to be able to go down the rabbit hole in 10 minutes. So, without further ado, let us begin. Now, first of all, the Olympics actually signifies many different things. The Olympics is big uh, symbolism. Now, when they open the scroll at the ceremony in China, there was many things going on in the ceremony that you need to pay attention to. First, they were dancing around the Tower of Babel, which is the Sumerian tower for uh, that God came and knocked down because they were trying to contact other gods. They were showing here that they've now mastered the DNA, that they know how to alter it and activate the higher chains of the DNA. Then there's a direct blow when they introduced the new logo, which clearly says plainly for anyone to see Zion. Now, this literally means that the Zionist movement is actually returning, and it's going to be finished in 2012. They're going to go to the next phase. I mean, these are sigils, two-dimensional uh, aspects or shapes that actually embed into the mind more so than the people can actually understand unless you're unlocked. This same actual sigil or a character in a language, which is the Germanic language, actually means Awas which is the being that Elias de Crowley was in contact with that gave him all the deep information. If you look closely, you'll see that the S's that you see don't stand for the shut, the shut stuff or the SS. No, it stands for the S in AWAS, which is in, in the Germanic language. Now, obviously we're not alone. Look, Earth is very small compared to other places, other atmospheres, other universes. So we know we're not alone. You know, whether people want to think these are authentic or not, let's just say they're not, but this gives a good idea of what these different types of beings look like. I believe some of these pictures are authentic or some of these beings have been authenticated. Um, and you see the mirror. It going on into this, basically, you know, the technology that's being shared from hyperdimensional beings is reaching its critical mass. I mean, there's been so much contact being made here and so what I would really like to just say is when you boost up technology and you begin to use organic and organic you begin to use uh, uh, extremely mechanical machines magnetics etc you can imagine what level that you're really going to go to let's just stop saying that these people are ignorant in fact we're the ignorant ones because we haven't destroyed our ego to understand that you need to learn some things now here's a beam this is a direct beam of communication. This means if you were to get into the future, you could do it by light, and then once you beam with specially operated devices like we see here, this is the Millennium Dome, you can actually make communication with uh, future dimensions, paradimensions, etc. You know, there's a whole slew of different devices that are being used to do different things, but uh, of course we have solutions for this. Uh, but as you see, this doesn't just extend to the new technology. There's been in the old days where there were certain energy thing, uh, energy devices used to control just large areas and groups. As you see, circumambulating vortexes actually equals energy. Uh, if you don't understand that, then you need to go take physics uh, 101, which is like the first class. Um, as you see, the Moldavite infused stone inside of the Kaaba. Uh, this is a uh, very intense Moldavite is very intense. It, it is a uh, stone that amplifies a person's intentions. However, if the intentions are bad, it pretty much could do dangerous things to the person. So it's for the holy. Um, these machines have gone out of control. It, it is 2012, so the matrix seems to be somewhat real. real. Everyone is entering their own version of hyperdimensional contact, at least boosting themselves up on certain levels of the spirit. These are devices that are being uh, actually uh, passed around now, and there's a lot of information about what these devices actually contain inside and how well they allow you to be able to contact what you're trying to contact. So far, it's been mixed. It seems to be a battle going on between the, the makers of these devices, each blaming each other for being involved in higher levels of governmental uh, corruption. This is currently leading the greatest ecumenical movement in history in order to unite all religions under Rome's leadership. In 1986, Pope John Paul II gathered in Assisi, Italy, the leaders of the world's major religions to pray for peace. 
there, there were snake worshippers, fire worshippers, spiritists, animists, Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, North American witch doctors. I watched in astonishment as they walked to the microphone to pray. The Pope said they were all praying to the same God, and that their prayers were creating the spiritual energy that was bringing about a new climate for peace. John Paul II allowed his good friend the Dalai Lama to put the Buddha on the altar in St. Peter's Church in Assisi and with his monks to have a Buddhist worship ceremony there while Shintoists chanted and rang their bells outside. The prophesied world religion is in the process of being formed before our eyes and the Vatican is the headquarters of the movement. The situation is getting critical. We have so many people saying that they're ascended and that they bring the light. It's hard to distinguish the light from the dark. And there is indeed darkness out there that are performing signs and wonders. So if you open your all-seeing eyes in the middle of your head, you can clearly see what's going on. You know, we've entered another phase. Like if you're still stuck in a phase or you're still trying to believe, you need to kind of wake up. Now here's what we got. Now Disney started this a long time ago. He was messing with our brains with Cinderella and different movies. He had aligned himself with certain men that were practicing phantasmagoria, which was a way to actually bring entities through the screen. And uh, using smoke and sound, they began to master it even more. And people said that those who participated in these movies couldn't even tell the difference between these uh, real and fake demons once these shows began to go on. Then they learn how to do it even more advanced. They learn how to put it into movies on the uh, different uh, digital spectrum. This spectrum allows them to tune in like the 15 by 9 and the 16 by 9s and the different aspect ratios of a TV actually allow them to be able to do different things with the person's mind. Because if you can send two dimensional images to the mind, it does a different thing. Love and light.